All right, so in this video, you're gonna learn how not to scorch your multimeter. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a couple different things that people do wrong with multimeters. See if you can spot the issues. Can you spot what I'm doing wrong right now? If I read this resistance as 200 and about 90 kilo ohms, what did I do wrong? I have my resistor, I'm measuring each lead across the probes. Or let's say I wanna measure line voltage. Can you spot what I'm doing wrong right now? Or let's say I have a meter like this and I look at it and I go, oh, I have 0.96 ohms. Let's say you wanna check power in one of the outlets just to verify that power is there. And you go in like this, you check it. And you measure what appears to be a couple, couple millivolts. Looks like there's no power, right? Once again, this time I wanna measure the current coming out of this outlet. What's my issue? So I teach an introduction to electronics course and these are mistakes that I see all the time, all the time. Now, some of these mistakes may just cause you to read a wrong value on your meter, but some of these mistakes can actually be pretty devastating. Like they could actually cause you to get hurt. So I'm gonna walk through each of those situations and hopefully by the end of this video, you can learn what mistakes not to make when you're using your multimeter. All right, this is the most common issue I see with people who are just learning to use a multimeter, right? So one of the first things you do when you're using a multimeter is you might wanna measure a resistor. So you set your meter to resistance, you go in there and you have your probes, you're thinking, oh, this is gonna be great. Uh, I gotta measure this resistance somehow. So you go and you put your probes and students, they go and they hold this with their fingers, right? Because they wanna get, they wanna be able to hold the resistor. So they hold it like that. Okay, well, what's gonna happen? Well, right now I'm measuring around 150 kilo ohms. So you go, okay, that's about 150 kilo ohms. Some students might be like, man, it's kind of bouncing around a lot. I don't know why the value's bouncing around so much, but uh, I'm not sure. So they go, okay, that's normal. And they would be 100% completely wrong. This is not even close to 150 ohm, 150 kilo ohm resistor. What they're doing wrong is by holding the resistor with the probes here, they're actually creating another path for current to flow. And it's, it's throwing off the, the meter's reading. Um, a, a better way would be to come in here and pin down that resist right there. And you can see we're reading about 0.97 mega ohms, right? So this is a one mega ohm resistor and that's within the tolerance of the resistor. So uh, this is a much more accurate value than what I was getting before. A totally different value, right? Um, and that's all because I'm not holding the resistor with my fingertips. Even better way than that is if you have some clips like this, right? Because it can still be hard to make a good connection, but if you have nice clips, Clip that on, right? Clip that on, hook that on there, and there we go. Now you don't have to worry about pinning it down. You can just read a consistent 0.972 mega ohms. Now what's interesting about that is depending on the resistor you're using, this may or may not be a huge issue. So if I use, this is like a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor, Okay, I'm not seeing that big of a difference, right? I got 4.4 kilo ohms resistor. And the smaller the resistance you have, the more current's gonna flow through your resistor and the less your fingertips are gonna matter, the less that's gonna create an alternative path for your meter to measure. Now, if I come in and I measure it like this, I'm gonna get a little higher. So it still affects the measurement, not nearly as much, right? So the smaller your resistors are, the less of an impact that has. All right, probably one of the other big mistakes I see people make when they're first learning to use multimeters is they, you know, they're beginning out and so they have one of these cheaper non-auto ranging multimeters. And in some ways this makes using your multimeter even harder, right? So if you can get a good auto ranging meter, uh, I highly recommend it. I'll put a couple of my recommendations in the comments, but you know, if you're using one of these non-auto ranging multimeters, you have to make sure that you read whatever you read here is in the correct units, right? There's no units displayed on this meter. So you have to realize right now, 
you know, so a new student may read this and say, oh, this is around uh, 0.96 ohms, but it's, it's not anywhere close to that. Um, you're in the mega ohm range. So when you read this, you're reading 0.96 mega ohms, right? That's a million ohms. So that's 0.96 times 10 to the six ohms. So don't forget when you're using these non-auto ranging multimeters, you have to keep in mind what units you're in. And that's just part of knowing your meter, you know, understanding, all right, what, where am I set at? Another issue students have when they're using these non-auto ranging meters is, oh, uh, they'll put it to something like 20 kilo ohm range here, the kilo ohm range here, and then they'll, they'll read open line. I'll be like, well, what's going wrong? I don't understand. Well, the reality is, you know, my resistance value that I'm reading right now is out of range of this setting. So you have to go to the next settings and see if that fixes something. So if I scroll up here to the mega ohm range, now I can get my reading. Another common mistake I see, students set up the, their meter and they go to measure the wall, right? So they, they put their probes in, right, like this, and they don't measure any voltage. And they're like, oh, okay. Looks like this is not working right. You know, maybe the outlet's not working. Well, no, they have their meter set in to measure Right, they have their meter set to measure DC voltage. And when you measure an AC signal with DC voltage, you're gonna get something that's close to zero. That's how the meter's gonna work. So, and the reasons for that, you know, are probably beyond the scope of this video, but that's a pretty dangerous thing because you might think there's no power in something when there really is power. <laughs> you know, so you go, you turn off your breaker at your house, you go to measure the outlet, and it, you think it measures zero volts, but it's not. That's a pretty serious safety issue. So always make sure when you're measuring line voltage, you're measuring AC, okay? So always measure AC when you're measuring line voltage, measuring outlets and things of that nature. All right, the other issue I see when people are taking their measurement is they use two hands to put these probes in, right? So right now I can, so right now I can actually measure this without having my hands really at the probes at all, which is one of the best ways you can do it. But I see a lot of people, they'll come in, they'll measure voltage with their hands like this. Okay, that's not good because you've just created a path through my arm here, through my heart, to my other hand here. All right, so you don't want any paths going through your body. So common electrician thing is to use only one hand. Obviously, if you can use no hands, that's even better. You may not know this, but these holders are right here. So if you ever need to measure something that's a higher voltage, you can put those in the meter and you can hold your meter. You don't even get, need to get your hands uh, near the probes and you can come in and touch whatever you need to measure the voltage across. Okay, another super common issue I see, and I'm just gonna use a battery to illustrate this for now, is that students wanna measure the current in their circuit. So let's say the student knows that they need to get this uh, meter in series with their circuit, they need to understand they're going to create uh, essentially a short, a direct path of current into their meter. Um, so what do they do? They go, they set their meter to read amps. In this case, they select DC amps. So I'm going to measure this, the current coming out of this nine volt battery. So they come in here and they put their probes in and they go, oh, well, zero amps, I guess this battery's dead because they forgot to change the ports on their meter, right? You can't measure current in this configuration. You have to move this port into the amperage port. So come over there, put that in there. And now let's go ahead and, right, so now I'm getting an amperage reading. And in this case, you know, if you forget to switch it from voltage to amperage, you know, you're relatively safe. You're probably not gonna get hurt or hurt your meter. But if you forget to put your amp, you know, you forget to put this back now to voltage, you can definitely hurt your meter and you could very likely hurt yourself. So always make sure to know, uh, be aware of what ports your probes are in. So if you don't know what you're doing with your multimeter, you can break your meter or you could even uh, damage, hurt yourself. So right now I have this thing configured in sort of a worst case scenario. 
right now this surge protector is off, so I'm going to turn that on. Alright, so I don't know if you saw that, but we definitely have hurt our meter. It almost caught on fire there. I can smell the burnt. I'm going to disconnect this power right now. I can't believe the meter is actually still working. But I definitely heard it. Let's open this thing up and see what's inside. All right, so I open this thing up. Check it out. We got some pretty good scorch marks right there. That resistor is absolutely fried. Our fuses seem to still be working, surprisingly. But some good damage there. Obviously, part of this meter isn't working anymore. It's possible the rest of these components are working, but it's not something I'm going to play around with. I'm going to toss this. Well, I hope you learned something from that video. Hopefully you're a little safer with your multimeter than I was. If you know of another common mistake that people make with multimeters, put it in the comments. I'd love to know what it is and hope you enjoyed the video. Here's another one of those multimeters shown in slow motion from a different angle. Check it out. Also make sure to check out some of our other videos.